fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, here's the voice we all know. Listen. I'm a happy mouse. Sure, that's part of a record of Mickey Mouse singing The Happy Mouse. Would you like to have the complete record? Just look for the special Wheaties package with the record on the front. You see, it's not just a picture of a record you'll find there. It's an actual Walt Disney Mouseketeer record. And it's part of the Wheaties package. Just cut it out with scissors, punch out the center hole, and it's ready to be played on any 78 RPM manual control record player. There are eight different Mouseketeer records you can get, all featuring Walt Disney characters. There's Donald Duck's song, Goofy singing It's Fun to Whistle, and many, many more. Just look for the special Wheaties Mouseketeer record package at your grocers. The records are free of extra cost with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, The Lone Ranger and Toto had arranged to meet in a woods not far from the town of Herkimer. The masked man had been overtaken on the trail by darkness. He made his slow way through the stand of timber until he saw a small campfire. Toto must have lighted it to serve as a beacon. Come on, Toto. Nearly at the end of the trail. Oh, it's a little easy. Steady, big fellow. Curious. Hey, we are. Don't move. We got you covered. Who are you? Why don't you come out of the shadows and show yourself? Come on, boy. You want us to show ourselves. We don't mind being seen. Keep your hands at shoulder level, mister. Now, suppose you take off that mask and show yourself. Craig Miller. You know me. Never forget your face, Miller. With lightning speed, the Lone Ranger dropped his hands and charged Ow. against the nearest man. There was one shot which went wild as Steve staggered back and fell against Quick Miller and the man called Pete. All three outlaws were off balance. The Lone Ranger drove a hard fist into Pete's stomach. Then, after a quick shot from the head, Steve went for his gun. Turning, he leaped to the saddle as Silver got underway. It was an hour later when the Lone Ranger reached another camp much deeper in the woods. Toto was there to meet him. Oh, 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 oh. You wait here a long time, Kimasabi. I was delayed, Toto. And I got to the wrong camp. Wrong camp? Yes. I saw a campfire. I thought you'd decide to camp near town. Oh, oh I wrote it. Kimasabi. Yes? We got plenty of news for you. You have? Ah. Me see fella in Herkimer. Him band fella. Craig Miller? How do you know? Just came from his camp. He has two men with him. Their names are Steve and Pete. I think he broke out of jail. Well, me see him in town with owner of Cafe. Ace for him? That right. Miller's dodging a law. I'm surprised he's going to town. Maybe he thinks no one will recognize him. Well, him use other name in town. Him use name of Blackie Martin. I'd like to know what he and Farnham are planning. I think I'll try to find out. You go to town now? Yes. And Tonto. You hadn't better build a fire here. Miller and his men may be looking for me. Uh, he's happy. All right, I'll see you later. You just need to be caught. One silver! While the Lone Ranger rode toward Herkimer, the banker of the town, old Ben Gilbert, wore a worried and thoughtful expression as he sat before the fireplace, whittling on a chunk of soft wood. Oh, company. 
I'll go, Dad. Wasn't expecting any company tonight. Why, it's Mr. Longwell. Good evening, Mr. Longwell. Evening, Miss Barbara. Howdy, Gilbert. Well, Longwell, this is a sure enough surprise. Do step in. I'll do that, Miss. I got some talking to do with your pa. Well, here's a chair, Longwell. Sit right down. Yeah, thanks. Gilbert, I'll point my talk and save time. I put considerable cash into your bank. You sure have. You're the biggest depositor we've got. You figure out how much I've got with interest. I'll be around and draw it out. Uh, draw it out? I want to hide it where I know it'll be safe. Safe? Why, Longwell, there's no safer place in the bank. You've seen how strong that iron ball is. No one could bust that open. All I know is I decided to get my cash. Do I get it? If you want your cash, you'll get it. First thing in the morning. And I'll be on hand. Mr. Longwell, let me ask one question. Did Ace Farnham have something to do with your decision? I make my own decision, Miss Barbara. I'll be around in the morning, Gilbert. Argument, huh, Longwell? Sort of, Farnham. I've got a hunch you were right about our money not being safe in Gilbert's bank. Step back to my office, Longwell. We can talk better in there. This banking business never made much sense to me. A man should have his cash where he can lay hand on it. Well, I sure hope you get your money back. Yeah. Yeah, step right in. Uh, thanks. I... Hey, who? Come in and close the door. Uh, Mast, who are you? What do you want? Steady. Don't shout. Keep your hands high and close the door. How'd you get into my office? That window. I knew you'd come into this room sooner or later. I've been waiting to talk to you. Sitting at my desk. You've got your nerve. Now, uh, look, if this is a personal uh, matter... You'll have to stay here. I can't let you spread an alarm. What do you want? What's Trig Miller planning? What? Who? Who's he? Farnham knows him. Don't you, Farnham? So that's it. <laughs> Banker Gilbert didn't waste any time, did he? Gilbert? Yeah. <laughs> you savvy the play, Longwell? No, I don't. You told Gilbert you wanted all your cash from the bank the first thing in the morning. So he sends this critter to make us think there's a dangerous thief named Miller somewhere nearby. So that's the scheme. You see? They're trying to make you think it'll be dangerous to keep your cash at home. Now, hold on. Are you Jim Longwell? I am. And you're drawing all your cash from the bank? Yes, but what Why? does... Why? Did Farnham say the bank wasn't safe? Gilbert must be desperate. Keep still, Farnham. Longwell, listen to me. Farnham and Miller had their heads together. If Farnham can persuade wealthy men to draw their money from the bank, Miller will have an easier time stealing it. (laughs) A likely story. I never heard of Miller. Come on. I've got to tell the boys. Ace Farnham turned his back on the masked man and opened the door to the cafe. Hey, boys, listen to me. The old ranger remained in the oh, office, Lillian. listening to Farnham as he addressed the townsman. Jim Longwell told the banker he aimed to draw out his cash first thing in the morning. Gilbert is hedging on the payment, just as I always said he would. Man, maybe I... Gilbert will run out on us before then. I move we curb his house, starting right now. Yeah. Yeah. You watch yeah. until the bank's so fast right. I said all along he was crooked. It's time we handle our own cash. We don't need any banker to watch it. And spend it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Hurry to the home of the banker, old Ben Gilbert. Oh, no, oh, he's a savvy club. Good evening. Uh, please let me come in. May? Wait, you can't. I'll can explain. Come... Time is short. Where is my gun? You don't need a gun. I'm here to help you. If you think that you can come into my you way... let me talk. A crowd of men from the casino are on the way here. For all I know, it may be a lynch mob. Oh, no, not that. They wouldn't dare to... Farnham's work. Let me tell you about Farnham. I went to question him about a crook named Miller, an escaped convict. Jim Longwell was with Farnham. Farnham's won him over. When I said there was a dangerous outlaw around here, Longwell thought I was trying to frighten him to leave his money in your bank. He thought you'd sent me. A lot of men are outside. I think they're from the casino. You think it's a lynch mob? Gilbert, open the door and see what those men want. If it is a lynch mob, I'll take charge. I'll speak to them, Barbara. Wait! Wait! What does this mean? What do you men want? We're here to keep an eye on Gilbert. Hey, Gilbert! What do you want here? Longwell, is that you? That's right, Gilbert. We're going to post guards to see the two ghosts sneak out of town during the night. Why should I sneak? 
sneak out of town. Because all these gents want their money back from your bank. You better have it. The bank will be open for business as usual at 9 o'clock in the morning. All right, Gilbert. But don't you try to sneak away, because we're watching. How do you stand, Gilbert? Will you be able to pay them all? No, of course not. Their money is safe, but a lot of it's invested in mortgages. That's what I thought. I can't meet all the demands until I've had time to call in loans and sell some mortgages to other banks. What are you going to do? I'll pay the depositors in turn as long as the cash holds out. And after that, well... Pay that cash out slowly. Give me as much time as you can. We'll meet again. Hey, Gilbert! There's a horse saddle and waiting at the side of the house. You figure on using that for your getaway? That's my horse. What are you? It's me. It's the second man. I'm riding away on that horse right now. Does anyone care to try to stop me? The Lone Ranger strode boldly past the men who had surrounded Gilbert's home, but he watched them carefully with his hands resting on his belt close to his six guns. Beside the great horse, Silver, he paused, made sure no one intended to draw a gun, then mounted quickly and rode away. <laughs> We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. For your health's sake, enjoy a big bowl full of cereal and milk every morning. Quick to prepare, economical to serve, and delicious to eat. It's nature's winning combination for flavor and nutrition. Every serving of cereal and milk gives you essential vitamins, minerals, and quickly available food energy. Every serving gives you the delicious flavor of your favorite cereal and the cool refreshment of fresh whole milk. Yes, cereal and milk are natural partners working for you. So put them to work on your breakfast table every morning. It's the energy way to start the day. Niacin, iron, thiamine, protein, calcium, all the vital nutrients you need for work or play are to be found in one ounce of good grain cereal and one half cup of milk. So remember cereal and milk when you plan breakfast. Make them an important part of every breakfast you serve. Now to continue... The Lone Ranger had no sleep that night. He lay in his blankets wide awake, considering one plan after another, and rejecting all but one. Toto, Toto, wake up. It was daybreak when he roused his Indian friend. I think I have it, Toto. I'm going to write a note. You're going to take it to the sheriff. It was a long note, carefully worded, and it gave the sheriff detailed information. You only follow these instructions. Uh, you go to Miller's camp? Yes. Now well, get going, Toto. Get him up to scout. The Lone Ranger waited to allow Toto time to reach town and deliver the message to the sheriff. Then when he judged the lawmen and deputies to be on their way to the woods, he inspected his heavy guns and started toward Trig Miller's camp. He dismounted some distance away and proceeded on foot. As he neared the clearing, he saw the man called Trigg sleeping in a blanket, while Steve was wide awake on guard. You're covered. Huh? What? Keep your voice down and your hands up. You. This, man, what are you doing here? You'll learn a lot before the day's much older. Well, what's going on here? What? It's the masked man. Both of these guns are ready for the first one of you who makes a fast move. What's the idea? What do you want? On your feet, quickly. <laughs> Turn your back to me while I tie your hands. Holding a gun in one hand, the Lone Ranger deftly tossed a loop around the wrists of the first of the two outlaws. Oh, that's tight. I intended it to be. He was about to tie the hands of Craig Miller when he heard a sharp command behind his back. Drop the gun, I got you covered. Pete, drop it, I tell you. Very well. You jumped us last night and got away with it. But don't try the same move again. I'm ready for you. I see you are. But I don't think you're fast enough to stop me. If I wait until Trig Miller gets your pal untied, I'll have three of you holding guns. I better make my bid right now. I got him. <laughs> I warned you, mister. 
I was just waiting for you to make a move, and you made it. You got him good, Pete. Right through the shoulder. <laughs> How about it, mister? Does it hurt? He, he's fast with, with a gun. Yeah, plenty fast. Glad you didn't shoot him through the heart, Pete. I want to question him before we finish him off permanent. Also, I want to see what's under that mask. Reach! Hey, it's the law. Sheriff, the law. Let him have it. They want gunplay, boys. Let's give it to all the Sheriff and his deputies pulled in from three sides, quickly overpowering the outlaws, while Toto rushed to his fallen friend. You hurt, Kimasami? Just a scratch, Toto. Get a bandage on it quickly. We have lots to do. Meanwhile, in town, Ben Gilbert and his daughter opened the bank while a grim crowd watched. Jim Longwell, as the biggest depositor, took charge of the proceedings. After drawing his own money, he turned to the others and called, Stand in line, boys. I see that you all get paid off. I'll do the best I can for all of you, gents. Just fill out the slips and sign your name. I got $200 coming. I got 400 Fill out the slips, boys, just like Mr. Gilbert said. <laughs> Gilbert's supply of ready cash was rapidly being depleted, and there were many depositors still in line to get their money. Well, there's yours, Hank. Thanks. Is that all the cash you've got left, Gilbert? Yes, yes, it is, Mr. Longwell. So you can't pay everyone off. What's that to say? Aren't we going to get paid? Now, listen to me. Let me explain. You know how men have borrowed money on their property. It's your cash that I loan out. I keep cash enough on hand to take care of anyone who wants to take his money out of the bank, but I can't pay everyone off at one time. Your money is safe. You'll all get it if you'll just give me time to collect what's been borrowed. We want our money now. How about it, boys? Then it's Ace Farnham. If the banker can't pay, he's a crook. He stole your money and you ought to be living. There was a clatter of hooks beyond the open door. It's a sheriff. He's got a posse with him. And some prisoners. Hey, who's the masked man? Everyone looked as the sheriff and his deputies dismounted and turned to three prisoners whose hands were tied. The sheriff pulled one of the captives from his horse and marched him into the bank, where Ace Farnham had been talking of lynching the banker. Get in there, Miller. I'll see if any of these towns can recognize you. There's Farnham. Let me at him. Let me get that broken boat. Sheriff, who's this? Let me at him. Take it easy, Miller. This is Trig Miller. One of the biggest crooks in this part of the country. You know him, don't you, Farnham? I know. No, I never saw him before. Oh, you lying, double-dealing, sidewinder. Never saw me before, huh? I suppose it wasn't you who put the law on me. No, no. There'll be over $5,000 rewards to capture these three. What are you going to do with all that money, Farnham? Me? Now listen to me. Well, you're collecting the rewards for it. Now you can't deny turning this over to the law. Trey, listen to me. So you do know him. No, wait, let me talk, Sheriff. Don't let him talk too much. Now it's my turn to talk. I'm going to see that you go to jail when I do. Now listen to me, Sheriff. Listen to me, audience. I busted out of jail, I admit that. I came here to find him because I needed cash. I knew him a long time ago. It was his idea to get all of you to draw your cash out of this bank and have it in your homes where I could get it. Me and my pals are going to steal it. That's not true. There's not a word of truth in that. It's all true, Farnham, and it was your plan. No, no. You figured it in both ways. You'd collect the reward for putting the law on me. And you'd take everyone's cash in your crooked gambling game. I didn't tip off the law. I didn't do it. I don't want any rewards for you. Are you sure about that, Farnham? A new stir swept through the crowd as the masked man appeared in the doorway. Are you sure you don't want the reward for capturing Trigg and his pals? I didn't turn him over the law. I swear I didn't. Farnham... It doesn't matter whether you double-cross your pals or not. You've been exposed. I think I'll listen to you, Farnham. Why, you dirty... Take the polecat out of here, Sheriff, before I take the law into my own hands. Come on, Farnham. You can go along to jail with Miller and the others. I reckon we can find charges we can hold you on after what the crooks have said. It was a trick. You made Miller think I double-crossed him. It was a frame-up. Yes, go on. All the dirty frame-ups of all the no doubt. Boys, it looks like I made a big mistake. I listened to Ace Farnham in a smooth talk. 
I'm putting my cash right back in the bank where it'll be safe. Here, Ben. Reopen my bank account and lock my money up. Of course, Mr. Longwell. I'll have to use some of it to pay off these other depositors. Use it as you see fit. You're the banker, and you know what you're doing. I reckon you'd better put my cash back, too. And mine. It'll be safer in the bank than it'll be at home where Brooks can get it. The bank is safer, Longwell. It's safe for me. Take back my money. All right, boys. All right. Just line right up, Barbara. Get those deposit slips. We're back. Jim Longwell went from the bank to the office of the sheriff to make sure Ace Farnham was in jail with the outlaws and also to learn more about the masked man. You didn't seem a bit surprised when he walked in, Sheriff. <laughs> That's right, Longwell. I wasn't surprised. You see, it was that masked man who told me where Trig Miller and his pals were hiding. It was his idea to trick him into exposing Ace Farnham. Then the masked man is really responsible for the capture of those crooks. That's right. I understand there's a substantial reward for the man who recaptured them so they could be sent back to finish their jail time. There's a reward, all right, Longwell. And the masked man earned it. But he didn't want it. No? He left word with me. He said any reward he might have coming should be turned over to the banker and used to build a school or a church or anything else that Ben Gilbert thinks our town could use. So the masked man turned down the reward. Yeah, he even took a bullet in the shoulder to get those crooks. Risked his life, that's what he did. Most remarkable man I've ever heard of. And I don't even know who he is. Do you? Yeah, he's sure enough the most remarkable man you ever heard of, Longwell. He is the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Crandall Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.